Thanks, Patrick. Everybody can hear me okay? Uh, I'm Paul Romano. I'm currently an engineer, uh, manager at uh, Ramble Engineering. Ramble is um, we're right downtown Utica in the Herd Building that was mentioned. Um, formerly O'Brien and Gear. Uh, I've been doing engineering in downtown Utica for over 30 years. And uh, I have a long history of, uh, in my family of engineering. My father was DOT regional construction engineer for 30 something years and my grandfather was a city engineer for the city of Utica back in the 50s when the Utica Auditorium was built. So I've uh, been doing that for quite some time and this is, uh, I do projects all over the state and uh, the, um, uh, even outside of the state, and uh, but the projects that interest me the most are the ones that are you know here in the city, in our backyard, in the region, and so this is you know this has been an important project to, to me f since we started it. So, um, consultant team on this, we've been we've been doing this work since 2014. We were hired by uh, the city uh, through its uh, the development corporation. Utica Harbor Development Corporation was formed to redevelop the harbor. That uh, board chose Alam Planning, and we were a sub-consultant to Alam Planning and back in 2014, and so we've been working on the harbor uh, for that many years, uh, nine years now, uh, and, and really um, making it become a reality. I know a lot of people haven't seen what's going on. This will shed some light, but it's, uh, it's gonna be really exciting. Uh, place to go in a city uh, pretty soon. So let me just uh, start with, uh, well, we'll do some history. We'll, then we'll talk about the planning going on and then we'll get into uh, public uh, project, uh, public project implementation. The project, the site has kind of a public side with infrastructure and preparation. And then, a, then there's also a private side coming, private development. So. A uh, lot, ha lot, of, about, lot about to happen. This talk's pretty timely. So, um, well, the story of the Utica Harbor um, starts. I guess it even starts before this this move of the Mohawk. In, in one way, I mean, everybody knows the old, the old Erie Canal ran through the city, went through uh, the city along Oriskany Street, and we would not be a city if it wasn't for the old Erie Canal. So, I mean, it's, it's actually a lot of upstate cities probably can say the same thing. Um, but uh, back in 1911, um, the, the old Erie Canal was not uh, functioning to the, to the capacity it needed to function for, for, for um, shipping and cargo. And the state started looking at a new harbor, or, I'm sorry, a new canal system to, to carry the load and it began the work on what was design work on what was gonna be the barge canal, which has since been renamed back to the area canal to, to cause confusion, but it's, it was the barge canal system. Um, the yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, uh, just before that happened, uh, 1904, 1907 timeframe, the city did something that uh, was a big undertaking, was moved the, the Mohawk River Mohawk River used to come as an oxbow, uh, and you can see it here, uh, came you, from the North Utica location and came right up behind the, uh, the train station, Union Station, and right in back of Bag Square. And um, that was a big problem for the city at the time. Flooding was an issue, but one of the bigger problems too was there was no treatment plant, no sewage treatment plant. So all the sewers ran into the Mohawk and then uh, it, in, the, in this section of the Mohawk and then it would flood, it would smell and it was flood uh, Utica around the train station and it was a problem. So it would, uh, they needed to, they moved it. It was a major, major project at the time. Uh, it needed state, state to get involved to, to approve it and it was moved to see what you, what you see today, nice, that nice straight line uh, uh, along North, North Utica, along Genesee Street. And at the time, people thought that uh, uh, the, the canal would be, the Mohawk River Channel, the new channel, the straight channel would become part of the, the barge canal system because a lot of the barge, barge canal was using the Mohawk River now in the new design. That didn't happen. The state proposed to put the canal 
uh, north of the Mohawk, north of the Straighten section, and um, which was in th at that time was Deerfield. Well, the Utica residents and Utica business owners threw a fit, and um, they they did not want their port facilities in um, you know in Deerfield first of all, and they didn't want it so far from the, the textile mills and the major factories that were using the barge canal, that were gonna be using the canal, had been using the old Erie Canal, and they didn't want it so far away. So they just, uh, they pulled a lot of political pressure. Some things haven't changed in Utica, probably, maybe. And uh, uh, they, they, they really um, rose a stink in, in Albany. Um, and they actually got the, um, they got the head of the, the New York State Engineer was a position at the time. This is just an example. The old Erie Canal ran right behind the textile mills. This is the, uh, the old Mohawk River. And then you can see the straightened section of the Mohawk uh, as it is today. And again, that black line represents uh, where the canal was actually planned versus being planned in the, in the straightened river channel. So again, Utica had, had a big problem with this and they called in the New York State Engineer. Uh, at the time, there was, uh, there was a position in the state called New York State Engineer. Um, and his name was Frank Williams. And uh, he, brought, he, he came and toured the, um, the, the Utica, looked at the situation, and talked to the textile mill owners uh, um, in West Utica and along Broad Street. Um, and they brought this information back to Albany that there was a, a big problem in the city of Utica that, you know, that the, the, they didn't want the port, the harbor being located in Deerfield so far away from downtown. So this other person on the left here is John Baxter. He was, a, he was at one time was the youngest Utica city engineer and then he went into private practice. And what he proposed to Frank Williams was a unique solution to bring the harbor back to close to downtown. And what he proposed was to take the old river channel, what the Oxbow, a portion of the old Oxbow, and make that a harbor branch and then bring the harbor, the, the harbor only a quarter mile from downtown Utica. So this, this was uh, a very unique solution because it was a three quarter mile branch to get to the harbor. And not only that, it, because the, the the barge canal would be designed at a higher water level than the Mohawk River. It would require a lock to get into that harbor. So uh, it really would cause a lot, a state to spend a lot more money to, 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 to build this harbor in Utica. Um, ultimately though, uh, the Frank Williams approved Baxter's plan and they decided to uh, go, go along with this idea to use the old river bed as the uh, branch to the harbor and, and then you know, formulate what's, what's gonna, what you see today is the, uh, is the harbor, kind of that spatula shaped harbor. Um, this, was, this was the language, there was a barge terminal commission uh, that was formed you know, that made the final decisions. And uh, this was the language, I always thought this was interesting. Um, uh, Let's see, to construct a municipally owned harbor similar to those which have been so successfully operated in various cities in Europe. No other city on the line of the Barge Canal has, such, has a so favorable opportunity for such an enterprise. Uh, should a city embark on such an enterprise, we find not only of great value to the material prosperity of the various industries in the city, but it would, that would also be financially profitable. So, so they kind of use some lofty language to approve this, but ultimately it was approved. And um, this was a drawing in the Barge Terminal Commission's report. So it ended up a little different looking. Again, ended up with a spatula shape, but pretty close to what you see today uh, out there. Um, and then I did a little overlay. Uh, you can see again that from the prior map, you can see the Mohawk River, the old Oxbow, and then you can see how the, the Utica Harbor and how you can see that the, the old river Oxbow forms the basis of the harbor, which I think that's pretty neat. Uh, so with that, 
um, the harbor was undertaken, uh, the construction was undertaken, it was uh, 1918, I think most of the work was done. Well, 1916, 1918, it was finally completed. Um, and I'll go through some of these historic components of that, but um, one of the thing, one of the key, uh, this is important just for the, the next part of the talk, but one of the key things that had to be built with the, was the harbor bulkheads. This was the original bulkheads. Bulkheads are just the walls around the harbor. I don't want to bore you with this, but um, this was how it was constructed, you know, at the time um, the wall was constructed on wood piles uh, and, and that held up for 100 years until we got to it uh, recently. This was the first building, still there today. Uh, we'll, we'll learn more about it, but this was the first building built in 1917, the warehouse building. Uh, still stands at the, at the, the harbor. Um, it was a little better shape than it is today, but still there. This was, this is the other key building at the site, the 1933 building. It's 1933 building was built in 1936. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah. But anyway, uh, this was. Um, um, it, I believe this was a Work Progress Administration building. This was Depression era. It was to help spur the economy. So the harbor, as one of the key locations in the city, got some attention from from Works Progress Administration. So that's still there today. You're going to see some plans for that. Uh, there's, the, there's that 1933 building being built. And I, you know, I really enjoy this picture because what you can see the old manufactured gas plant behind it, the gas holder, one of the, made, the big gas holders, and you can see what an industrialized area this was you know, back uh, in 1918. Where's Avenue? It's uh, directly across from Wurz Avenue. Yeah, across Genesee Street and on to, yeah. Um, there's a, you know, so talking about that, we talked about the gas holders on the other side. So everybody knows the National Grid Harbor Point cleanup. Uh, this is some pictures, uh, you know, in the heyday of this manufa manufactured gas plant. Um, get manufactured gas, you, you use coal gas to, you know, lights to, to um, uh, that gas would go to lights in the city and supply, you know, for, for lighting be before electricity. The, um, this was, at the time, this, M this manufactured gas plant operation was one of the largest uh, energy producing facilities in the Northeast. In, in fact, one, I, I've been told it was the largest energy producing facilities in the Northeast for quite some time. Um, uh, but that's what it looked like back then. It, it was quite an operation uh, and also quite, created quite a mess on that side of the harbor. Um, there's some more shots uh, of, the, of the industrialized area uh, of the coal gas manufacturing plant at the time, which just kept expanding. Uh, and there was, ended up, there was a steam generation plant there as well. So just a lot of, um, a, a lot of activity, which caused a lot of contamination especially on that side of the harbor. Some, some more pictures, you know, a lot of old pictures, sorry. But uh, it, it, it was quite a facility. So we've been talking about redeveloping the harbor in, since the 80s. And um, it was 85 when you start, there really was a lot of push in the city to start to redevelop it. And most of that was on the, uh, most of that was talking about developing the national grid side, the, 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 the uh, manufactured gas plant side of it. And that's when national grid, Niagara Mohawk, the national grid started cleaning up the site. And there was a lot of misunderstanding that that was gonna take five years and the site would be ready for redevelopment. Well, they're still cleaning it up on that side. So, so you know, what, what so the, the, the harbor really kind of um, came back into vogue, it came back as an important development site when um, there's, this is uh, kind of just, I'm not sure why I put this one in here. Oh, the more manufactured gas plant pictures. Uh, there's, oh, I skipped ahead a little bit. There, there's the, some, of the, some of the components of the cleanup for National Grid. I don't think we need to get into much uh, detail on that, but there's just, just a lot of cleanup activity going on for many years. Um, okay. 
I was skipping ahead of myself a little bit. That's okay. Um, the, uh, I just, a quick mention, this, this slide's in here, maybe a little out of order, but the canal recently got a designation for a, uh, um, a, a national historic landmark, which is you know, one step above the state historic landmark. So it's, it, it, we'll get into this, what, what that means in a little bit. Okay, I just, I, I'll just want to finish my thought there. You know, so we, what happened was when it came back into, into interest, when we, the city realized that the Canal Corp might be willing to be, be well, almost were forced, but the Canal Corp operation that was out, out there back in 2014, well, there was some talk there that, well, maybe we can move them off the site. If we, if we move Canal Corporation off the site, it would, open, it would reopen the site to, to the public and give it an opportunity to, for redevelopment. So it was Roan Destito uh, at the time that pushed in Albany to, to, for the Canal Corp to vacate the site, vacate its maintenance facilities, and to allow the city and the, the Development Corporation to get in there and start to redevelop a whole lot of other land beyond the national grid, you know. So basically, the land right around the harbor, and then another, and a, a, we call it the backside, and, and some more 14 acres, 15 acres of land further back behind the harbor. So that really changed things. Canal Corp, under the Thruway Authority, fought it for a little bit, um, but ultimately they they went along with it, and there was legislation, um, uh, probably 2013 that uh, turned over, that, that required the Canal Corp to turn over the land to the LDC, to the Utica Harbor Development Corporation. Um, it, it, you know, they, they had to close up operations. They were given some time to do that and turn over the land. So that's really when another round of activity started and the planning that we're talking about now, I'll, I'll get into now started. But just one real quick, this is just going over the uniqueness of the, what we have in Utica on the canal. Again, three quarter mile branch, uh, only a quarter mile from downtown, it's a spatula shape. Um, it's probably the best representative uh, of a harbor on the barge canal system um, because of its industrial histor history, which is really what the barge canal was about, and also its closeness to downtown. When the, barge, when the old Erie Canal was closed and the barge canal system started, most of these harbors on the barge canal system were moved way out of downtown into you know, areas, you know, remote areas of the city, into the suburbs. But it's not the case in Utica. It stayed right here, and that's why we have this an, an incredible opportunity to utilize it today in the area it is. Um, again, it's all, and again, it's the only harbor on the whole system that has its own lock. So again, really unique situation. So the planning. Um, when, you, when you undertake a planning situation, uh, a program like this, uh, you try to rely on past work. So, you know, we're, the, when the Utica Harbor started to be planned, we look at the work that was done with the Utica Master Plan. There was a Brownfield Opportunity Area Plan. There was a Local Waterfront Action Plan. And you try, to, you try to use all these plans as building a foundation to what you want to do in a, at a particular location. So. Uh, we, under, we, got, we started, we got partners at every level uh, to, to advance the planning. Uh, as we talked about with this critical transfer of land, so you can see that, uh, I think it's labeled 14 and 16, I can't, well, oh, 14 and 38, but those, a little bit different color, those are the Canal Corp lands that they owned, and, th and those were, would eventually get turned over to the city and to the, the, the local development corporation. So you can see we didn't need now, now just national grid land to develop this harbor. We had this, this great ring around the harbor of property and we had, uh, again, 15 acres of land beyond that that shows this parcel 38. So all that now is being planned for development. So that's really what's happening now. That's, that became the first phase. National grid will become the second phase whenever they get done. Um, there was tons of stakeholder meetings and presentations and outreach you know, uh, across the community for a, a couple years. Um, and then, you know, we, we started the master planning uh, concept, master planning uh, based on the input we got. 
Uh, part of that master planning concept, and this gets this maybe uh, gets maybe too much in the weeds, but you know, one of the things we did was pre-permit the site, which is really hard to do. It's called a generic environmental impact statement. So the idea there was to get all the permitting development permitting done, so the developers can come in and just start work without without having to go through this process themselves. So it's a it's a kind of a time to market reducing the time to market, allowing them to skip this major step and go, go into the site and develop it as long as they develop it in accordance with the master plan. So that's, that's what's happening. This, this, this gives you an idea kind of uh, what, we're, what we're doing. You know, uh, 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 number one in the blue there is more of the hoping that's an area for restaurants, uh, mixed uses. Uh, right around the harbor, um, and then uh, th two, three, and four um, might have a blend of hotels and residential components to it, along with some commercial components. And then five and seven is where National Grid is. Because that's pretty floodable land there, the, the thinking there is more recreational uses, uh, multi-use fields, soccer fields, baseball fields, um, trails, uh, passive recreation, you know, uh, and we'll get a little bit more into that. That was, this was the kind of a rendering of uh, one of the first visions we had. You can see, and again, some of that residential mixed-use development up on the, on the backside, and then some additional development around the harbor for restaurant use and, and uh, right along the ring of the harbor. Uh, this is just our, our kind of vision statement. Um, revitalizing the area to create an economic, economically sustainable multi-use development that would become a premier waterfront destination within the city. Uh, we also see it as a regional asset. Um, be, after we did the, the master planning for the harbor, the, I don't know if people remember, the community foundation did a visioning plan and they, they planned other areas around the city. This is just an overlay of what they came up with on top of what we came up with at the harbor. But I think the important thing that's happening that's uh, over the last few years is now we're seeing the connection from the Utica, you know, what we're calling the sports district around the odd and the Nexus Center to the harbor. So if, if the Nexus Center is kind of your indoor tournament facilities, we eventually see the national grid side, especially of the harbor, as your outdoor multi-use facilities for tournaments. So we're kind of seeing um, these, these things come together. And what a unique situation to have a harbor and all this land ready to be developed at the same time, really, as the lands around the, of the odd became more available. And the, so these visions are coming together to create a really unique space in the city. There's, there hasn't been anything like this for decades in the city. It's an exciting time to see um, something come together in, so, in such a, proxim a way that's so proximate to each other. So um, we're really trying to, we're going to be doing, there's going to be more planning around that. Um, you see, they had a, this vision plan had a baseball stadium, but um, thoughts of, you know, do, do we want to look at soccer stadiums? Do, you know, there's, so this is just, again, visioning and some, some thoughts um, I think some more concrete um, projects will come out of that kind of combining the harbor with the sports district. So uh, there's been a lot of work that you probably don't realize because there's a lot of fencing and th things there are still kind of uh, protected from people going in there. But um, this gives you a good, I'm going to start going through some of the things we've done and, and you're going to see why, what the process is and why it takes so long. Um, but this is just, this is the State Historic Preservation picture, but I like this just from, it gives you a sense of the buildings. And again, that 33 building, um, which is the, I wish I had a pointer, but it's the one closest to, closest to on the right side of the page here that says retain and renovate. That's the 33 building. Um, I guess they all say that. And that but the 1917 building is uh, further up on the top there. And again, those, the State Historic Preservation Society um, considers those two assets that, that cannot be demolished and everything else was able to be demolished or less, less critical. Um, so 
those two buildings remain. Uh, the rest of the buildings shown on this have been taken down and they were not important structures. So, um, well, on a site like this, so, so it, um, the National Grid side has its own problems, right? It has the coal tar and, and the cleanup going on there, but uh, the, the area right around the harbor had its own problems. It was, so for years, the barges would come into the canal, they would unload number six oil at the canal, and they would put it into, into a pump system and pump it out to uh, bulk storage facilities that were right on Metal Street. Um, well, those pipes failed and it was a, and it also made a mess when they did their unloading and loading. So we had an amazing amount of petroleum contaminated soil, number six oil contaminated soil. And so 14,000 tons, we've been, this, I, I can't tell you how much of cost this has been to get rid of all this soil. We pretty much dug up, you know, the whole area around the marina and, uh, State of New York has paid for 90, 95% of it. Yep, at least, yep. So um, we finally got a spill closure letter, but that's just some pictures. I just want to give you an idea that, you know, that's one of the reasons why things take long. Um, but we started implementing some of the components of the master plan. The first thing you saw in 2016 was a new entrance road in there. We, you know, we put up the special lighting. Um, we, we, programmed in here some really nice landscaping. Uh, we're working on making sure that landscaping is up kept, you know, the upkeep is good, but we have a nice entrance, you know, into there and that kind of sat there for a couple of years while we try to get the other portions of the site ready. So that's, that lines up with Wurz Ave. This was going to be called Wurz Ave as well, uh, but it, uh, the city cannot, the city couldn't call it Wurz Ave on the other side. As you know, if you live here, most ones on each side of Genesee Street, the same road is going to call different things and the blocks start at a hundred block, you know, on either side of Genesee Street. Same problem here. Couldn't be where's at because of that problem. So it's been renamed uh, Harbor Way. I think the, the council renamed it Harbor Way. This is that area, again, kind of on the backside, that 15 acres. This area, why it was available is because the, because the Canal Corp used it, for, used it for dredgings. So they put all the dredgings here, they dredged the harbor and they put it here. And of course the dredgings were contaminated with coal tar, so they contaminated this area for a while. And then National Grid, Grid had to clean up this area. But finally, we were able to get into this area with the dredgings and uh, close it and get it ready for development. That's just a picture. That's all been regraded back there. It's been regraded, it's settling now, but we've opened up 15 acres of development for a developer uh, back there behind the monocles. If you drive all the way down Wells Ave to the end of Wells Ave and you look a little bit to the right, that's, that's where this area is. The bulkheads, so the bulkheads, like I said, they lasted for over 100 years, but they were in incredibly bad shape when we got there. Uh, so we had to uh, come up with a project to completely replace them. Uh, it was a $7 million project. We needed state dollars to do that. Uh, that was done 2018, 2019. And I, I know people are really can't get out there, but if you saw what the, the bulkheads look like today, that, that's, they really, uh, it's it really brought back the harbor to a nice, neat, clean look. So we got bulkheads, hopefully, that would last another 100 years or more. Um, that's 60 feet of sheet piling there with concrete caps. And the concrete cap is supposed to be reminiscent of the old, con of the old concrete walls that were there. Uh, one of the crazy things we had to do for state historic preservation, if, you're, if you remember those other pictures, the 1917 building was very close to the harbor wall, uh, but we had to rebuild the harbor wall um, that means we had to move this building out of the way to build the harbor wall, but then we were told by the State Historic Preservation Society that we can't demolish this building. So we had to take this 200 foot structure and move it away from the wall to rebuild it. And then they said it can't go, it will not go back to any other place except its original location. So, and we were the only harbor, there was a lot of these across the state and they were moved all over the place. We were the only ones that were told by State Historic that we got to put it back in the same spot. So we, we did that, removed that. 
that thing was bowed like this. It was, it was a, a large bow in the, in the roof. And then when they put the steel under it to move it, it actually popped. You could actually hear it, and it straightened out. And um, yeah, it was, it was not. And then, and then, um, but what we did, what we did was we took the advantage of when we moved it, got the harbor wall done. We then we put a, a whole new foundation there. We rose the, the foundation a bit um, because of the flooding issues. So we rose. We, we uh, it's five feet higher today than it was back then, so that it's going to prohibit some of the, it's going to save us for some of the flooding it was going to get. And we moved it back. So now it's there, ready for redevelopment. There's, there's already interest in it. Uh, we get asked about it routinely. So we expect the project there. Uh, then what we did, and this is interesting because it's almost a street grid that the uh, Barge Canal Commission envisioned, but we, we kind of put it back together in one way. But this, this Where's Ave Extension, which became Harbor Way, it, uh, actually we're gonna, it's going to connect back to Wells Ave. Again, Wells Ave with Delmonico's and uh, Tavolo on either side, that road will be connected to this Harbor Way road, so you're going to be able to loop around and uh, around and come back in, or at the harbor. So this, this road will be a nice drive to take you close to the harbor. There'll be a couple public parking spaces. They, they're not really showing here. Too well. There's there's a second one that was programmed in here. There'd be a couple places for public parking. Um, so, and that's important because um, one of the things, and I don't know if I have a good picture of it, but one of the things we've done is take the Ray Hill Trail, which is going to be called the Canal Chenangle Trail through the city. That 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 trail is going to go right through the harbor, swing around it, and um, it's going to eventually connect to the Canal Trail. So um, so. Public parking here is going to be important for trailhead access and everything else. So that's we're making sure we program those elements in. Um, this is an earlier rendering of the marina design. This is pretty much what's happening. Um, that 33 building, uh, there's a developer now that the city's talking to, the local development carpenter. Well, it's, it's MBG. I, I think that's already been in public. They're planning to build a restaurant facility next to the 33 building, and they're planning to renovate the 33 building back to its original look. So that project's already underway, and in a couple of years, we're going to have the first restaurant, you know, right at the harbor, and it'll be the 33 building will be used for um, banquet events, but more importantly, it'll be used for um, like uh, wine and. Um, say a wine cheese festival for a month or something at the harbor, uh, Christmas on Main Street, uh, small concerts. So it'll, that uh, 33 building would be an event center that you come down to the harbor and, en and can enjoy it and have something to do. Uh, and again, that night, it says 1918 building. We've been calling it 1917 building. That's, that's, that's next to go out for RFP for a developer. And um, could be another restaurant. There's been other ideas like could it be um, uh, a, a distillery with a tasting room, you know, things like that. There's a lot of uh, ideas out there. Um, that's just a little bit of a visioning on the, on the National Grid side for multi-use fields. Uh, one of the things we've been talking about um, connecting the Nexus area and the odd campus to the harbor is this pedestrian bridge, which would be under the Washington Street alignment. Uh, the city actually got $2 million of federal money to, to, um, to design this. Um, we don't have construction dollars yet, but uh, we want to design this. And what's important about that is if we can have multi-use fields on, that, on the harbor side, we can share parking with Nexus and the odd so that you could just walk across the Ped Bridge and use those multi-use fields and anything else we program back there. Um, and also be bicycle and pedestrian friendly, because there's going to be you know, other, and we vision of oh, this robust trail network. So the trail network can start right there and connect you to what's going on at the harbor trails. Um, so the private development, we're, you know, we, we're not just letting them uh, do whatever they want. One of the things that we also did and was passed by the Utica Common Council was design guidelines because we want this to be special architecture. We don't want to be box um, commercial architecture. We want something special to go around the harbor. So um, 
we're envisioning, so around the harbor is two different colors here. A and B, A is for uh, kind of canal architecture that's more traditional. That's what we want to see right around the harbor so we don't get too far from the look what this harbor was originally looked like. We, we, so it's kind of like this, these older type looking buildings that you might see around the harbor. We want to kind of preserve that look. And as you move out to the outlying district a little bit, then they can, the idea is to use a, a mix of old and new so that they can have some exciting architecture. But we're really trying to get away from, uh, you know, the, um, the, you know, commercial like hotel architecture, you know, that you might see like, you know, that it's cookie cutter, you know, we want something special, so. So private development, and I'm, I'm almost done, I'm sorry. So this again, this is this, this is the site we're still trying to program the 15 acres. Uh, there's been some ideas there for mixed use departments, but there's really want some entertainment uses to go along with that. So we're hoping that over time, we'll program some, not only some apartment use and residential use, but also some entertainment use, whether what, what, we don't know what exactly what that could be, but there's a lot of ideas of what that might be. Um, and, and, and that's important just because you got We have to realize the Nexus Center has changed what a lot of what we're doing in Utica, having these tournaments every weekend, and having these some of these tournaments are international. The, the people coming into the city is is a we've never is a whole different group of people coming to the city, and it's a captured audience, and they're with their kids, and they look these parents and their kids are looking for things to do when they're here for that weekend. And so making sure we have some of these other in entertainment ideas programmed into the harbor now is, kind of, is some of the new thinking we've got to embrace. So that's why we're talking about, you know, entertainment pieces and uses that would attract families uh, and parents to, to different facilities, you know, in this area. So this was one of the first sketches we did you know, re redoing the 1933 building. We, we, at first we thought it would be maybe a good idea for kind of an international food court or something, but again, we, I, I told you about it's gonna be more of an event space, but this was one of the earlier uh, renderings. And, and that idea kind of uh, was not, the food, uh, food halls idea is great, and it's really being programmed now at the Union Station in the addition to the Union Station. So we're gonna have that, just not here, but still in the, in the, in the vicinity. Um, and this is a rendering that the, the developer just did, yeah. So this is, it, you can see the 33 building getting all those windows back in, it brings back the original look. And you can see the architect has kind of embraced that look of that building and brought it into the design for the new building, which would be a new restaurant. And uh, so it's, it's, and that's coming. That's, that's coming down the road and uh, uh, the plans are being built and uh, that'll probably be the first thing you see. Um, well, first thing you see on the private side, but I do want to mention, I probably didn't mention, all, uh, as far as the promenade, as far as the marina, this, this summer, the contracts are being bid, or contracts will be awarded or, or the bids are coming in next week for the promenade marina work project, which would is going to put uh, walkways all around the harbor. It's going to put um, uh, those parking lots we talked about. It's going to put uh, landscaping uh, around it. So by the end of this summer, you're going to see a real different look at the harbor lighting, you know, uh, uh, lighting that's reminiscent of, you know, kind of uh, waterside lighting. So it's really going to be, you're going to, I think the real big difference you're going to see is probably at the end of the summer. And then probably the summer, end of the construction year, the following year, you'll probably see this restaurant and, and, the, and the 33 building center uh, ready to go. Question from the yep. people. Will the harbor lot be repaired so voters can enter? Yeah, that's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just, this was just, let me, I'll take all questions out, because this is just the 1917 building. We're trying to get the redevelopment of that going, too. We talked about that, so, and that's really everything. Okay. Well, thank you all. This has been amazing, Paul. Oh, well, thanks. Very exciting project, and yeah. thank you for the updates, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, so the, 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 the canal lock. So the canal lock today is not working. And uh, it's in terrible shape. And um, uh, it's, uh, so uh, the Canal Corp is aware of this and, is, and the mayor's office has, has talked to the, the uh, Canal Corp extensively on this. Um, we're hoping that uh, it'll be in their budget, you know, in next year or the year after to do uh, the kind of rehab it needs to get it working again. Obviously, well, we want to bring boaters in there and, uh, you know, I mean, the water side stuff's great, but we don't want to lose the ability to bring boats in, you know. So, um, so we're, we've, there's been great partnership from Canal Corp, so we expect that'll happen, but it's to do it, com to do it the way, um, let me say, to, to do it completely, it's probably a $25 million project. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, yeah, anything else? I'm just curious, in regard to the development in the area that you indicated would be called a sports area or something like that, I'm just curious if you're going to use Rob Eichel now. Well, it, uh, <laughs> you know, he, Rob's all, he's, he's, he's part of the divisioning, he's been part of the stakeholders, and uh, his, so his input is in there. But how, how that would be done yet yeah, is hard to say because it could be will be run by, will those multi-use facilities be run by uh, the audit authority or another authority or, you know, by the city? Um, or will a private developer want to run those facilities? So, it, yeah, it's got, yeah, he's a stakeholder. Yeah, he has, yes, I agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not that, you know, I mean, well, it's, it's basically the same water as the Mohawk River. I mean, well, you know, it's, it, I mean, it, it's decent water quality. It could be better. Uh, it's, it's getting better because of uh, some of the work that actually the city's doing on the this, on this sewer side. Um, but it's, it's, it's got some, you know, it's got had some PCB issues. Obviously, it's the coal tar. The coal tar doesn't really affect the, the water quality too much. There is some soluble parameters from that that get in the water, but all that, any, any of that contaminated sediment has been capped. I didn't talk about that, but in the harbor itself, th there's an actual cap underwater that caps this, this contaminated, soil, uh, contaminated sediment. So that's not impacting the waters there. So it's just, so basically it's the same water quality as the Mohawk through this whole area of the city. Yeah. I have one more question. Yeah. Along with the, we're now waiting for state budget to come out, but the governor's housing initiative that she's talked about, I think we're going to yeah. see what happens in that in the state budget. Is any of that targeted with the land again? They, I don't know if the, so far the developers haven't brought up that connection, and it, but I, I, did, I did hear about that, and I think that's a good thought. Um, uh, so we haven't explored that completely yet, yeah. We're a little bit early to have the boating floating docks because of that question on the lock, the lock. Um, but we are, um, and this was actually a big push of the mayor, uh, we are putting a special smaller floating dock in that is for kayaks and canoes. So that's, so that's, in, that, it's that, that's in that summer construction package right now. No, in fact, I, didn't, I forgot to mention that. Too. So, so yeah, so the, um, that old steam shovel, uh, the Canal Corp left, and they cared about. It. They, they they cared about it too. They they ask about it. They um, so the plan is uh, is actually these construction documents today have uh, set aside. Uh, I forget the numbers, like a hundred thousand dollars to rehab that steam shovel. Actually, that steam it's like a steam crane, right? So that was the crane they used to take the stuff the, off the barges. Uh, there was an example of some uh, in San Francisco. They took an old steam crane like that and made an exhibit. So that's our plan. It, that that crane. That steam crane ran, ran on the railroad tracks against the harbor, and we're gonna we're gonna take that. We're gonna put a couple full railroad tracks, uh, landscape around it, rehab it, put the put the crane arm back on it, and that'll be hopefully a spot people can take pictures and stuff. You know, yeah. I I, I think there's an amazing potential for outside investors nationally. I think there has been some interest. Um, I think I think that interest is gonna grow. Especially with you know when not with put the international tournament you know inter tournaments coming you know next year um, at Nexus I, I think you're going to see a whole different a whole another uh, set of developers interested in Unica my, my opinion yeah.
Yeah. As the LDC is negotiating with developers, they're trying to keep things down to you know five years. You know, you know. So I would say no longer than seven years, but with a lot of activity over the next few years. You know. So no, we, nobody wants to see this go. We've waited too long already. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you're going to see that activity and hopefully completion. I would say within seven, even hopefully even before. Yeah. It's such a large floodplain, you know, and uh, and so to get it above the federal flood level, you you really can't get some of these to this. It's elevation 411 is a federal flood level. The the harbor walls are at 402.5. Okay. So what we what we designed for though is what, what the historic floods really haven't gone over 407. Um, so we've been using so it's flood it's it's going to flood, okay? At some point, these facilities will experience a flood. Uh, what we're trying to do, and the, the developers understand that, but it's still valuable. What, what, we're, what we're doing uh, is they're building these and designing them for flood resiliency. So the restaurants, so two things. So the, the 1933 building, the floor in the 33 building, the inside floor will be raised to 407. The 1917 building is already, that floor is already at 407.5 because of the new foundation. All new buildings will probably put parking underneath and, and then the facilities, their main facilities on the second floor. So that restaurant we talked about, I don't know if you noticed, had parking underneath it and then restaurant on the second, third floor, whatever, you know. So those would be, built. so it was really designing for flood resiliency and they're planning for that and, you know, that, so that's how we do it, you know, because we don't want to lose our waterfront. So we have to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. There's some other bigger plans that Canal Corp has that would change things, how things are released out of Delta and this and that, and could actually lower the federal flood level, but that's down the road. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.